Welcome to another tutorial video from Tolomats. Make sure and subscribe for more. This is the video just explaining the proof to the cosine rule. And the cosine rule in your log tables is stated as a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now before we get into the proof of the cosine rule, so just this is pre-proof, we just need to do a little bit of revision of our unit circle. Now there's a more in-depth video which will explain the unit circle in a little bit more detail so perhaps have a look at that uh, before looking at this video on the cosine rule but just a very quick revision on it. Uh, the unit circle was basically a, a, a circle which had a center of zero zero and a radius of one unit so that's what the, the unit circle is. We created a triangle out of that radius line and it had a 90 degree. Now the coordinate at the edge of that circle we can write that as the coordinate x, y. So I went out a distance of x on my x-axis and I went up y units on my y-axis. And there are the two sides on my triangle. And we would have looked at our sine, cos and tan ratios and we would have figured out that if we examined uh, our sine, cos and tan trigonometric ratio. So let's have a look at sine very quickly. which is opposite over hypotenuse. Let's just label up our unit circle here. I would have my theta as my angle. My hypotenuse is the side opposite the 90 degree, which is the one. Opposite the angle is my O, and my adjacent is the third remaining side, adjacent to the angle. So when I fill in my sine A, I would have sine theta equals O over H, which is Y over uh, one. Now, what I want you to spot here now, when we're using our cosine rule, we're not going to be using the unit circle. We're going to be using a circle, not with a radius of one, but a radius of, let's say it can be any length. I'm going to give it a, a length and I'm going to call it the letter B. So I'm giving it the length B. So I'm just going to put the letter B in here. So it's not the unit circle. I've changed that now. But over on my sine ratio, it will still be O over H, which will be sine theta equals Y over B this time. So let's change that one to a B. Okay, and I'm going to basically do some simple algebra there. I'm just going to put my sine theta over one, uh, some cross multiplication, and then you have B times sine theta is equal to Y. So there's my coordinate for y. I'm going to do the same now for uh, the cos ratio. So it's going to be cos angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. It's going to be cos of theta is equal to adjacent, which is x over b. Again, it's not the unit circle. I'm going to do, again, some simple cross multiplication, which gives me x is equal to b times cos theta. So that angle now at the edge of the circle, which we called x, y, I'm now going to relabel that, not x, y, but I'm going to relabel it as um, x first, which must be b cos theta, comma, b sine theta. So this is the coordinate that we need to use now when we get into the proof of our cosine rule. Remember that that coordinate can be anywhere on that circle. So if I was to pick the point over here on the circle, it would still have a radius length of B. So the coordinate will be B cos theta comma B sine theta. Okay, so that's just a little bit of background information that we need to know uh, prior to examining the cosine rule. So let's Let's look at the proof to the sine or the cosine rule. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have my center point on my circle, uh, a coordinate of A. I'm going to label that the point A. I'm going to have another point B, which is going to be outside of the circle. And I'm going to have a point C, which is on the circle. So I'm going to label it up here maybe. So I have three points, A, B, and C. Connect those three points. So create the triangle out of those three points. Just remember one of the points has to be on the circle, one of them has to be outside of the circle, and the third one has to be the center zero, zero. Now we know from our previous piece of information at the start of the video and from our unit circle uh, under another video that the point there or the coordinate C 
must be labeled as B uh, cos theta, B sine theta. So that's the coordinate at C. Label the uh, A as zero, zero if you want. Uh, B then, just if we look, if we actually, first of all, let's label our, our diagram. So the side here across from the angle A must relate to the length A. The side across from the angle B must relate to the side B. And the side across from the angle C must be the side C. So what I want you to focus in on now for just one second is labeling the coordinate B. So we want to label this coordinate B. And how are we going to label this coordinate B? Well, if you think about it, I've gone out a distance here from the center of the, the coordinate graph out to the point B. Now, the, the length of that line from A to B, we've just called it the length of C. So I'm gone out to C units on the X axis and I'm not going up or down on the Y axis. So I'm labeling that coordinate B as C zero. I'm then going to come back into the center of my image and I'm going to look at the angle A and I'm just going to call that then my angle uh, theta because it relates to the coordinate C, which is B cos theta, B sine theta. So I'm just using the same symbols there. So there's my triangle. Now, how we're going to prove the cosine rule, basically, it's uh, just a little bit of advanced mathematics. It should, it should work out fine for you. But basically how we're going to do it is we are going to get the distance from the point C to the point B. That's basically all we're doing. We're getting the distance between two coordinates and my two coordinates are B and C. So let's write down our two coordinates first. So there are my two coordinates. I'm going to label my two coordinates then with X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Obviously the order of the points uh, doesn't matter. Uh, getting the distance from C to B is the same as the distance from B to C. Um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to, well, how do we find the distance between two coordinates? We use our distance formula and our distance formula is within your log tables on page 18. So we're just going to take down our distance formula. Now, just be very careful when you're filling in your distance formula. This is where mistakes can be made. So just be extremely careful. Your X2 is going to be your C. I'm subtracting my X1, which is B cos theta, all to be squared plus my y2, which is zero, minus my y1, and my y1 is b sine theta. Again, all to be squared. Make sure it goes back into your square root. Now I'm going to expand my brackets because it's squared, which means I'm multiplying it by itself. Now my d, I can change to a, because the distance from c to b, according to my diagram, is a length of a units. So I'm just going to substitute a in for d because that's the length of the line. And I'm expanding my bracket. So it's c minus b cos theta times c minus b cos theta. That's my first set of brackets. Plus my second set of brackets to be squared. I'm just going to make that a little bit easier for myself. I'm going to ignore the zero because it's zero. So I'm just leaving myself with minus b sine theta all to be squared. Okay, so I've just left out the zero. And again, don't forget that it all has to be in the square root. Keep going then. I'm going to multiply out my brackets. So it's first term by second bracket. So it's C times C minus B cos theta minus B cos theta is my second term times my second bracket. Okay, and then my final part here, it's minus B sine theta by minus b sine theta. So let's write out my two brackets. So it's plus minus b sine theta times minus b sine theta, because once again, it is telling me that it is squared. So let's put that back into my square root. Uh, make it a bit neater than that. And we are going to then go and do some multiplication. So c times c, is giving me c squared. c multiplied by uh, minus b cos theta is giving me minus b c cos theta. Then I'm multiplying the minus b cos theta into my second set of brackets, which is giving me minus b cos theta by c, which is minus b c cos theta. And then minus by minus gives me plus. B by B gives me B squared, 
and cos theta by cos theta gives me cos squared theta. Next thing now I'm going to do is minus b sine theta by minus b sine theta. Well, minus b by minus b is giving me a plus b squared and sine theta by sine theta gives me sine squared theta. That is all within our square root. So just be careful there with your sines and your squares and so on. Let's tidy it up a wee bit. So a is equal to, well, what can we group together? We can group the minus b c cos theta with the minus b c cos theta. That's giving me two of them. So I'm going to have a square root of c squared minus 2bc cos theta. So that's the first thing uh, grouped and tidied up. Um, the next thing I'm going to do here is look at the next two. See what they have in common. They both have a b squared. So all I'm going to do there is basically factorize out that b squared. So it's going to be plus b squared bracket cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Again, just take a second so you see that. So if I was to multiply in that b squared, it'll get you back to b squared cos theta plus b squared sine squared theta. So all I've done there is I've just factorized out the b squared. And that is going back within my square root. Now what I want you to focus in on is page 13 in your log tables, which states that cos squared uh, a plus sine squared a is equal to 1. So on page 13 of your log tables, that's what's stated. Now we're going to use that little piece of information here because if you look at our top line here, we have it written as cos squared a plus sine squared a. Now that theta is the same as in a, it's the angle. So I'm going to substitute that with the number 1 according to page 13 there in my log tables. So how that would look is if we write out our a again, it's going to be a is equal to c squared minus 2bc cos theta plus b squared and I'm substituting from page 13 there in my log tables. I'm substituting cos squared theta plus sine squared theta and I'm substituting in the number 1. Close my bracket and it's within the square root. So what's highlighted in there in yellow is basically what I substituted. So that's leaving me with a is equal to, get rid of the red pen maybe, so a is equal to the square root of c squared minus 2bc cos theta plus b squared because 1 multiplied by b squared is just giving me b squared. Now you think to yourself how do we get rid of that square square root? To get rid of a square root we square um, both sides of the equals so if I square a square root it'll cancel so I need to do it to both sides. Maths tells us if I do it to the left I must do it to the right and vice versa. So the square will cancel with the square root which is leaving me with a squared is equal to c squared minus 2bc cos theta plus b squared. Let's just do a little bit of rearranging. I'm going to move that b squared in front of the c squared because we just want to put it alphabetical. So a squared, don't change the sign because it's not uh, coming over an equal sign or anything like that. So b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos theta. Now we're practically done. Just look at your picture up above here that you've sketched out at the start. We label the angle as theta. Uh, they've la we've originally labeled it as a, so I'm just going to substitute my angle back in there, um, which is going to give me uh, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And that is exactly what the question wanted us to prove. They wanted us to prove uh, that is the cosine rule, which we just have. So that is the proof to the cosine rule. Check out the other videos for the unit circle and the sine rule and so on. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.